Let me give our audience uh, some interesting highlights. Uh, best on, found on the back cover of this book. Quote, if I have to pay a political price for it, I am going to uphold the position that the constitutional rights do not begin at Ligonie. That's not where they start. End of quote. Applause. That's Prime Minister Bruce Golden. This is Paulette on FiveEyes.tv. Today I'll be speaking to Dr. Paul Ashley, attorney at law, social commentator, and author of the explosive new book. The book uses official emails from the US government and the Jamaican government, as well as transcripts and quotes to paint a vivid and frankly frightening picture of the machinations of government and others involved in the Dudas affair. Why do you choose to write the book in such an objective manner? It is important uh, for political life and for students studying the political history of Jamaica mm -hmm. to have easy access to what actually took place. This is not a narrative. It's not a how-to book. I don't know Dudus. It's not sexy. It, it is, in fact, it is, I would say, very intriguing and it demands a certain amount of focus. More importantly, however, I think that it is necessary for one to substantiate anything that one is advocating. It's important that the history be accurate and not be what some uh, creative individual decides to sensationalize because he wants to get the book sold or a movie made. This is not a story, a figment of anybody's information. Anything that is in this book is documented, it's official, and can be substantiated. Could you give our audience some ideas of the topics covered in your book? Sure. And, and I, I will just do this briefly by mentioning yeah. uh, what's in the seven chapters. In fact, it's not an epistle. It, 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 it's, if you will sit down and read it, no problem. Uh, chapter one, overview, constraints, profile of the subject, Christopher Dudus Coke. This was the profile on the security uh, maps, the security radar. This is his profile, official. Okay. Contracts with the government of Jamaica. Flight or flee options. Chapter two, confidential breach. The indictment handed down by the US grand jury. The tipping of, the tipping of Dudus. Western Kingston Tivoli Commission of Inquiry. Findings of the Tivoli Commission of Inquiry. Comments. Soft detention plans aborted. And I will just pause here. The issue is, if they were electronically monitoring Dudus, and the, the security forces knew he was being tipped off, why didn't they arrest Dudus at the moment that he tried to move from Plantation Heights, where he was, to Tivoli Gardens? They said that the party that they had him under surveillance had the capacity so to do. Why did they not do it? And the question that the readers might ask themselves are, uh, did they want him to go to Tivoli? So you could have an operations in Tivoli, and maybe do this was an excuse for the uh, dealing with Tivoli, which is characterized as the mother of all garrisons. Delays and tactics. <laughs> this is very interesting. Uh, additional information requested by the Jamaican government, including a picture of Dudus. Uh, they, they wrote that. <laughs> I mean, you can see that. Drug kingpin designation. The delay in seeking extradition. The involvement of so-called unauthorized persons. Further and better particulars. The insufficiency and in, in, in brackets, of the evidence presented and initiating local court proceedings. I must tell you that the extradition papers were signed without any or many of the requests made. I mean, nothing changed. The involvement of the firm, Manat Phelps and Phillips, the position of the firm, instructions given by the prime minister, who was also the party leader, the rationale for the Brady initiative, the attorney at law, Harold Brady, mm -hmm. uh, played a very integral part of that. The resignation of Senator Dr. Ronald Robinson and duplicity involved. Then you have government of Jamaica's machinations. You have the likelihood of, a, of an extradition request. The operational plan of the security forces. 
Prime Minister and Minister of Defense saying he was aware of the surveillance, military surveillance uh, by the aircraft. Security forces shown they were not made aware of the intention to sign the authority. Of, they were made aware, just like the Jamaican public, and they wanted three days' notice so they could have made adequate preparation. The use of mortars, which the Prime Minister was informed that it didn't take place, and the Jamaica Defense Force only admitted it years after. Aerial surveillance by the US, uh, it was very embarrassing. Uh, people were taking pictures of the so-called spy plane, and pictures were paid in the, United, in, the, in the newspapers. Yet still, the government said there was no spy plane operating. And nobody gave permission. Uh, the footage from aerial surveillance, the government has, Jamaica has not requested it officially. And the spinning, what I call the spinning of the spy, why did they say there, there was no spy plane operating there? And this is all a figment of somebody's imagination. Where people saw it, I mean, Tivoli Gardens, um, a, a plane flying over Tivoli Gardens, you can see it from the airport. And the plane was at the airport. I mean, it's kind of obvious. The role, uh, the United States government's machinations, now this tells you about the power of a big, powerful North American state. You have country report on Jamaica, role of the United States in the capture of coke, published reports of extrajudicial killing, diplomatic pressure, travel alerts all around, uh, Jamaican government requests for additional supplies, government supplies and the response. And then finally, the escape of and capture of Dudus. Seven chapters, uh, about 176 pages of reading. The Jamaican government seemed, from the documentary evidence in the book, at odds with the US government over the interpretation of the extradition treaty and it appears wanted Dudas to be tried in Jamaica, but backtracked rapidly at the last moment. I don't think the government of Jamaica wanted Dudas to be tried in Jamaica. Okay. Indeed, the evidence is that they were anxious to have the authority to proceed signed, so Dudas could be held for the minimum amount of time in Jamaica and exported quickly, extradited quickly, because to have to do this in Jamaica trial is a serious security risk. Given that Dudus was able to mount that operation in Tivoli Gardens, how would they, where would they try Dudus? In which part of Jamaica? And what would be the risk involved for a trial that would last how many days? What would be the risk to the judge? What would be the risk to the political uh, the, the police force members involved. Uh, Dudu's influence was nearly all pervasive. So I don't think any government in Jamaica would have tolerated Dudu's being tried here. More importantly, Dudu's was not even wanted for a traffic violation in Jamaica. So I don't know how you are going to try Dudu's in Jamaica when he's not wanted for anything in Jamaica at all. In fact, if, 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 if the truth be told, maybe Dudu's was in line for national honors in terms of philanthropy. But that's aside. Uh, he has done dons. He, he was a generous don in terms of uh, school feeding programs. Right. And he had, he had the, the, the music fraternity putting on an annual back to school program for Metric. He was a generous don, even okay. though there are stories that he was ruthless. But to be a don, you, you not only have to be generous, you have to be ruthless. It is, it is far for the course. Uh, but as respect to the extradition treaty, the extradition treaty has been in force for a long time. Jamaicans have been extradited without any problems at all. Jim Brown was about, Jim Brown, his father, was about to be extradited uh, with no qualms about the extradition treaty. There's argument about the so-called memorandum of understanding with the communications. Mm -hmm. There's arguments here. Oh, the regime that objected, they have not amended the memorandum of understanding. The same circumstances under which Dudus was extradited exist even today and I might add will exist tomorrow and for the time being. So there's no argument about the problem. Uh, what I would say that the delay seemed unnecessary. In, in, fact, right. uh, in fact, people would argue that if you had any objections and the objections weren't dealt with and you signed the papers because of how the population of Jamaica uh, responded to the delay, then hey, 
So I let it lay and let to the squad and then fight another battle. Okay. I'm gonna just move away a little bit. Yeah. Um, it has been noted that your work has failed in a number of areas, namely, no details have been provided on the personality of Christopher Koch, his child, childhood years, uh, schools attended, friendships, etc. The role of the Rev Al Miller in the capture of Dudus has not been explored. And number three, there are no details provided on the killing of Keith Clark in his home oh. by members of the Jamaica Let us deal with Defence. The childhood uh, characteristics of Dudus is not important yet. Uh, Dudus friends, up no moment, where Dudus went to school, etc. Dudus importance was to the United States in the, the distribution of cocaine by the Shower Posse. Dudus was wanted by the United States. Dudus was wanted by Jamaican authorities. Uh, people knew of Dudus' father, Jim Brown, right? Dudus was a Don whose importance was linked umbilically to his, act, his gang's activities in the United States. Uh, Dudas was linked to the Jamaica Labour Party and its founder, it not its founder, the past leader, Eddie Seaga, was not friendly with Dudas. Uh, Bruce Golding, from his sojourn in the Indian, had expressed a, dit, a dislike for garrison communities, believed that garrison politics and donmanship was something to be reduced to the minimum. But the Don in Jamaica played a very important part. Right. It provided services that the state failed to provide. It could deal with uh, temporary relief in terms of uh, provisions for individuals going back to school, uh, uh, getting loans, getting even free illegal services. Uh, it, it, the Don was helpful in providing security. Security in the sense that if a government had a problem in a certain part of Jamaica that the police force or army could not deal with, the Don was who you call upon and it would be dealt with swiftly. It might not use the uh, formal institutions of justice, but when a Don dealt with a, a social problem, it was dealt with very quickly. And indeed, uh, garrisons still play a very important role in Jamaican politics and the linkage with Jamaican politicians. Some of them are now referred to as area leaders or what have you, but dance still exists on both sides of the political fence. It has been a problem to get serious information in respect of the killing of Keith Clark and the role of Al Miller in this exercise. We have been promised, quote, quote unquote, explosive information by some attorneys involved. That promise is yet unfulfilled, seems to be unfulfilled. It has delayed the publication for at least three months. I don't know if the individuals involved intend to write their own stories. But if you want a good excuse, why the information is not there. Mm -hmm. uh, in legal language, they will say is the matters are subjudicate. The Almilas uh, uh, conviction is being appealed, and the Keith Clark killing uh, is still going on with some, constitu some constitutional hearings about whether the uh, public interest immunity covers. Um, maybe next year we'll get some more information, but. That is it. Uh, what is important to note is that the government of Jamaica has issued a formal apology to all those involved or affected by the Tivoli incursion, to those who were, who were the families of those who okay. were killed, got compensation, uh, those who, were, uh, who died as a result of the invasion of the military personnel, they got excuses and apologies, etc. The government of Jamaica has been silent in respect of the killing of Keith Clark. Oh. No apology or compensation to the family. And this is now eight years. 
years. Yeah. Long time. A very long time. Yeah. Keith Clark is, I mean, uh, Reverend Al Miller, they have a story about him, but we must remember that Al Miller was not apprehended along with Toulouse. He was let on his way and asked to come back in, which is very strange. Some people say he should have uh, been given a national award because his role in facilitating the handing over of Dudus uh, prevent the potential loss of any more lives. Oh. Not even a mosquito was killed in that whole operation. And Al Miller, it is said, would feel that he has done a national good and is being victimized for it. The other side of that story is that maybe his uh, conviction is a badge of honor, and maybe the conviction is essentially to spare his life, because there are some ignorant people who might have the view that is Al Miller betrayed Dudus. So oh. maybe, maybe you know, one never knows, but uh, let's see what happens. In your considered opinion, what is the most unsatisfactory deficiency of this work? And do you intend to rectify such? The most disturbing and unsatisfactory deficiency is the silence of the military intelligence unit in respect of this operation. Where is the intelligence? What was the intelligence available? How did they have to pump so many bullets into the body of Keith Clark? And no one is being held accountable. What is that? In front of his family in his residence. Gosh. Was the orders to kill? What were the orders? This frail man, one shot in his foot, would have been on the ground. It is said over 20 shots. I mean, why was the telephone not answered? by the security forces when his wife tried to get assistance. Uh, the information is that it wasn't the police that were involved, it was a military operation. We have heard nothing about the military intelligence. That even one member of the opposition said something went strangely wrong. The, inf the intelligence that so-called informed the operation, both at Mr. Clark's house and in Tivoli Gardens itself. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong fundamentally with that intelligence gathering machinery. Indeed, members of the operating forces of the police in the Jamaica Constabulary Force weren't aware of the military operation, the details of the military operation. And the military high command didn't know about the police's uh, operation and didn't care to inform them of it. So the military, the military did not even inform the police of how Dudus escaped and when and where he went. So that is it. It was never a joint operation. It was a disjointed operation. Now I'd like to thank you for giving us this opportunity um, for this interview. Um, it's very powerful um, to talk about your book. Let me say I must thank Five Eyes. I've had an association for over a decade with Five Eyes. And indeed, uh, the original one might be embarrassing to a few, even myself, but never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dudus, the extradition of Jamaica's n number one drug don is not available in bookstores or on the internet. What is your target audience? And how are interested members of the public able to read your work? I probably was under the mistaken impression that decision makers are a different breed, that they would read. Uh, Jamaicans have lost the inclination to read, probably due to the existence of the internet and instant communications. If you're not on the social platform, or if you're not available, if anything is not available on the smartphone, not even the laptop, no, smartphone, uh, they don't have the time. Uh, it, has said, it has been said that we have a very short attention span. So my target audience was first decision makers. I have circulated the work to people who I believe in the political directorate who are, who should be, I can call it myself, should be readers. Some say
say they have made it. Uh, I don't believe them because very few, probably only three, have pointed to any detail in the book. I have refused to autograph copies of the book because some people were more interested in the autograph and the selfie more than reading the work. And my promise is, after they have read the work, and I'm sure I will then autograph <laughs> it. But let me say that that target audience has been satisfied. I hope to also target uh, people who would read a book. So I have circulated copies to the National Library, Jamaica Library Service. Okay. And I have circulated mm -hmm. copies to the University of the West Indies, hoping that future leaders, potential leaders, will read. Uh, I've been informed otherwise that they have moved on. <laughs> uh, so currently, negotiations are in stream to probably get it on e-books or Kindle or Amazon. Books. Okay, so people. Right? So people can get access, access to, it. to it. But as I said at the opening, it is not a sexy narrative. It's not the stuff that, you know, glamorizes anything. In fact, it is probably a little bit depressing when you de deal with the power, the narco threat, when you deal with the dependency syndrome, when you deal with how we feel and how we deal with politics, and the whole business of third world incompetence right, comes to the fore. But I suppose one day, maybe a future leader will be convinced he ought to enter politics because he has read the book. <laughs> He or she, maybe to the general. I'm he glad. Or she, right? maybe I'm maybe glad you very, changed maybe that. Maybe politically correct. Yes. Maybe he or she. And, and look at it this way. I've given political commentary for over three decades. Uh, when I read some of what I've said or what I've written, I would say the same things today. I don't know if anything much has changed because of my commentary. I don't know if the current decision makers were even aware of some of the original things and they won't take the time. I'm hoping that this might be a lasting contribution to uh, political uh, history development of Jamaica. I mean, I sure Shakespeare didn't give political commentary. And I sure people are reading these works years after and now seeing the relevance of it. So I'm hoping, right, I'm probably wishing in vain that it will make some lasting contribution and the public will be able to read it. And more importantly, scholars, because our history tends to be written by people who weren't either around or aware of what took place at the given time. Finally, do you intend to write the Christopher Dudas Coke story? That depends on Christopher Dudas Coke. I would be interested in sitting down with Dudas whenever he gets out of incarceration, wherever he is, and let us explore his side of the story. I am interested to know how Dudus dealt with local politicians. I am not interested to hear about how the shower posse uh, distributed cocaine and how it got its hands on illegal guns. Uh, it all depends on Dudus, uh, if he's forthcoming with his side of the story. And as I said, if he's listening, or friends of his, our contacts who might view this, Boss, anytime. Okay, Dr. Paul Ashley, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I have enjoyed it, and I, I must say that the audience probably uh, haven't been made aware of your expressions to the answers. That, that would be a study in itself. <laughs> and, and thank Five Eyes, and uh, I'm sure that when Five Eyes gets this out, it will generate a good amount of buzz. Okay, thank you. Go back again to the Prime Minister. If a minister, having examined it, recognized that it is supported by evidence that was unlawfully obtained, disclosed or used, but still proceeds to sign it, she should immediately sign one other document, her resignation. That's Prime Minister Golden talking about the Attorney General, Minister of Justice, if she signs the authority to proceed. But let me give you one uh, attributed to the then Commissioner of Police, uh, Hardly Lewin, 
that he said that this is what the Minister of National Security, Dwight Nelson, said to him when he told him about the uh, indictment against Studus and the handing down of the extradition request. CP, you don't understand. This matter could cause the government to collapse. End of quote. The one that is most memorable in terms of the television audience and the uh, what took place during the time in the first commission of inquiry was done by uh, Queen's Counsel K.D. Knight, who declared that during the session they called him, quote unquote, star boy. And this is star boy for you, finishing his cross-examination of Prime Minister Bruce Colin. You are a pathologically mendacious person, and that you, Prime Minister, should Pack your bags and go. I hope I did it like how KD would have done it.